right, welcome in everyone. I'm super excited to have you guys here today to go through this leadership agility webinar. So this is really about how personal agility will help you unlock your purpose, trust yourself and step powerfully into your leadership so you can create your remarkable life. So first I just wanna introduce myself and then I'd love to get to know you guys as well. So a little bit about me. My name is Tamar Alada Sokolsky. I'm an enterprise business agility strategist and executive coach. I'm also the founder of Women Leading Powerfully. So many of you guys were able to attend that and I'm so excited for it. It was such a great summit and I really consider it to be a movement. So I'm really creating a group on Facebook um, and wanting this to become more of a movement where women are supporting women and we're leading together in such a powerful way and giving each other opportunities to be able to grow. So lots of certifications, lots of background. I've done a lot of different work. Uh, what I want to highlight today is what I'm passionate about. I'm truly passionate about helping individuals and organizations develop this clear strategy. This is what we're going to go through today. How do we align that vision that we come up with to key outcomes that matter? Why? Because by taking action towards our goals, we can overcome limiting beliefs we can create the life that we truly, truly love. And so with that, I want to share a super personal story with you guys, but something that um, 10 years ago, I would say a little bit more than 10 years ago, I was married and I got divorced a year later. I got married way too young. And I honestly, uh, coming from the Middle East in the culture that I come from, there was this kind of scarlet letter on me and I never thought that I was going to find love again or have this remarkable marriage that I do now with my wonderful husband Joseph and I feel so fortunate in a huge part of overcoming this limiting belief starting to trust in myself stepping into this leadership came from this methodology that I'm going to teach you today so today it's going to be very business focused. So if you are currently in an organization or you're starting a business, but I want you to know that you can use it for any goal in your life. That's what I use for my own goal in my life to really figure out who I am and who would be my ideal husband. And I was, I was able to call in exactly who I needed. Um, my husband, I am so lucky. He's incredible in every way and not something that I thought was possible. And so I just wanted to share that with story with you guys, just to know that you can use this for so much more. And please, at any moment, feel free to stop me and to ask questions. All right, so a little bit about who have I worked with? Who else is using this? So I just told you I use this to plan my wedding. I use this to call in my amazing husband. But I also use this with a lot of corporations, all the way from Google is using this, LinkedIn. I've personally worked with USAA, Saks Fifth Fab, Verizon, so many of these big organizations. If you guys know who Ray Dalio is, Bridgewater Associates is owned by Ray Dalio. So I got the privilege to work with him directly. I also work with United States Strategic Command Center, if I can get my words today. <laughs> I work with them as well. And currently, my client is the United States Federal Reserve System. So a lot of organizations are adopting this. And you may be wondering why, right? What are they using this for? And how? what, what is the results that is getting them? Today, the outcome of this webinar, what I really hope that you'll walk away with is learning the fundamentals of leadership and personal agility. How to use it to identify what matters most in your life and ensure that your actions are aligning to that. There is, in my own life, there are so many times where I declare something important. For a long time, you guys, I've declared this important, this business in serving women and starting to really step into my own business rather than just working through different consulting companies. And even though I would have said that this was a huge priority for me, I was not making progress towards it. So what I had to do was really take what I teach organizations and turn it into what can we do from a personal agility perspective. So today, that's what I want to share with you. It's a super simple process. And I want you guys to walk away feeling like you can take action in your life and that you want to try this. So how to get out of your own way, trust yourself, and step powerfully into your leadership in five steps. So for me, I just shared a quick story that I'd love to share with all of you that just joined us. But for me, 
starting this business and really starting to show up, use my voice, not be scared, not be too shy to get on camera, too shy to speak to people, just trusting myself. Um, I got in my own way. There was no reason why I couldn't trust myself, but I got in my own way. And so I had to develop this process for myself to really understand what does it take for me to take what I teach to clients that makes them so incredibly successful and apply it to my own life. So what I found is five steps that have really made a huge difference for me. And I hope that they will for you today as well. I will walk you guys through these five steps. Today, hi Cassidy, it's good to see you on camera, love. So today this webinar is going to be five steps. Step number one is gonna be your mindset. That leadership mindset, what you're committed to is such a critical part of getting anywhere. And that's why I put it as step number one because without it, if everything else that I knew that was pretty easy to execute, I could not get there without it. So. The second thing that I want to take you guys through is vision. Step two is vision, right? If we are not creating, if we are not consciously creating something from a future vision, then what we're doing is we're living from our past, you guys. And so I really want to empower you today to not just join me here to hear how to create a vision, but I want to invite you guys today to create a vision. Okay, having a great vision is great. Step number three is measurable outcomes. How do we take that vision and make it into measurable outcomes? Step number four, now you have your vision, you have a measurable outcome that you're trying to move towards, right? You're starting to be future focused rather than recreating our past. How do you execute powerfully? This is where personal agility comes in because that's how you take all this and actually start to execute, like organizations execute, right? Get serious about our lives. And step number five is check-in and accountability. That's just what it sounds like. It's just about being able to check in with someone, right? And it could be yourself and then the accountability behind that. So what benefits are people reporting? These are 10 benefits and there are so many more, but these are the benefits that my clients and others have reported. Beating procrastination. I don't know if you struggle with this, I do, right? Feeling better about themselves. That voice inside of our head. Is it your friend? Do you love what that voice is telling you? This will help you get there to feeling better about yourself. Understanding what really matters to you. These simple questions that I'm going to teach you to ask yourself on a weekly basis, they are six questions, will lead you to deep insights about what you really want to achieve in your life. Are you able to say yes to the right things? No to the wrong things. Are you able to set and achieve long-term goals? These are all the things that people said this is what I got out of applying this. My favorite, as I shared earlier in this webinar, is better relationships with spouses and family. As I said previously, I've struggled in love and finally being able to be married and most importantly, have a happy marriage did not come easy for me. And I use a lot of these mindset techniques that I'm going to talk about today uh, to have that, to be able to achieve that with my husband. Fewer emergencies, able to trust themselves and feel powerful. And finally, and one of my favorite is just the health benefits that I've seen my clients get, being able to commit to things that they've been wanting to do for a long time, like lose weight or just eat healthier and actually being able to stick to it. So personal agility is going to enable you to be able to double your impact and be the highest performing person you know. Who's excited, you guys? You ready? All right. So a few testimonials. I'm not going to read these to you guys, but you can glance at them. I just wanted you to know a little bit of my background and who I've worked with. So these are just a few of my executive clients and their testimonies. Okay. What do people say about agility? 
it gives me a good framework and context to having a meaningful conversation with my wife about actual things we need to get done. Of course, I love that one, right? Don't we all want our husbands to go through this? <laughs> right? That's powerful. And so you guys can read a little bit more of these, um, but I love that one. Now I feel much more focused on what's really important and what makes life happier. Because it gave me more focus on and helped me understand better the difference between the importance and urgency. What is urgent is not always what's important. And so I want to also speak to that today when we talk about these six powerful questions. All right, with that, I would love to hear more about you. So if you guys can just take a moment, join at slido.com. The code is 1369. And tell me a little bit about you. I want to know uh, what best describes you and why you joined today. What is it that you want to get out of this? So let's get started, you guys. We're going to start with step number one. Step number one is leadership agility mindset. So this is really about what is our mindset. I'm going to play a quick video for you that here is the deal. I'm going to offer a ton of value today, right? I am going to do my best to give you guys basically a step-by-step -step strategy of what I do with my clients. You can take all of this, but without the right mindset, you will not be able to achieve it. And so I'm going to start with the number one ask that I have of you today, which is being above the line. So if you were in the uh, Women Leading Powerfully Summit, you may have already seen this video, but it'll just be a repeat and hopefully helpful one. Location, location, location. Brought to you Can by you the it? Conscious Leadership Group. Find them on the web at www.conscious.is. Animation by Graham Franks, www.grahamfranks.com. Um, one question that conscious leaders ask themselves over and over is, where am I? To support leaders in locating themselves as they ask the question, where am I? We offer this tool, a line, a simple black line. At any moment, all leaders and all people are either above the line or below the line. Our location describes how we're being with what is occurring in our life right now. If we're above the line, we are open, curious, and committed to learning. If we are below the line, we are closed, defensive, and committed to being right. Stop right now and simply ask yourself, where am I? In this now moment, am I above the line or below the line? Typically, when people are below the line, they believe certain things about the world. For example, they believe there is not enough. It could be that there's not enough money, or time, or space, or energy, or love. People below the line also believe that their story about the situation is right. People below the line also believe that there is a threat out there. Something or someone is threatening their desire for approval, control, or security. And people below the line see the situation as serious. The deeper below the line they are, the more serious things look. People below the line tend to behave certain ways as well. They tend to cling to an opinion, find fault and blame, gossip, explain, rationalize and justify, get overwhelmed, and avoid conflict or pursue conflict for the sake of winning. When people are above the line, they believe that learning and growing are more important than being right. They believe that all people and circumstances are their allies, here for their growth. They believe that from a distance, almost everything is funny. People above the line live in curiosity, listen deeply, speak unarguably, question all their beliefs, and live a life of play. Now, knowing what you know about being above or below the line, where are you? One thing to know as you consider this question, we are hardwired to go below the line. Literally, our brain is programmed to perceive threat, and when it does, a chemical cocktail courses through our veins, and we go below the line. This reaction was designed to help us survive in the presence of a real threat to our physical survival. An issue for modern day leaders is that often our brains can't tell the difference between a threat to our physical survival and a threat to our ego or identity. We react and get defensive when we experience a threat to our ego. 
So in many ways, being below the line is natural and normal. But when we are below the line, we're not in a state, literally brain state, of high creativity, collaboration, innovation, and relational connection. We're simply trying to survive. Leaders today can't thrive if they're in survival mode. So the first activity of conscious leadership is location, location, location. In this now moment, where am I? Telling ourselves and others the truth about our current location begins the great conversation. Speaking on mute, that's fun. Hello guys, welcome in everybody. That Are you working from presence or the drama triangle? Thank you. Love this other video, the drama triangle. Okay team, so let me ask you a question. What were your thoughts on that video? As you watched that, what came up for you? It's not always easy to be above the line, right? We strive, we all strive to be above the line, but the reality is things can get in the way. So I wanna talk a little bit about what does it mean, which we're gonna go really deep into today when we talk about mindset training, right? Tracy said it was so eye-opening from what I, experiencing right now at work where I used to be below the line after quitting my aggressive job I'm above the line yes 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 so I want to talk a little bit about our mindset right because it's so so critical that we are one know that you will go below below the line and get triggered multiple times a day there is not a human walking this earth that can be above the line all the time so if you watch that video and said whoa I was below the line right before this call. That's normal, right? We all have our moments every single day when we are below the line or above the line. And the thing is, what's powerful is a quick exercise that I would love to do with you. If you're driving, if you're on the road, do not do this. Uh, but if you're here and you're able to be present with us and do this exercise, I just wanna invite you to close your eyes Take a deep breath in. Now, this breathing technique that we are going to do is box breathing. So we're going to take a deep breath in for a count of four. So ground yourself. If you're not wearing shoes, put your feet on the ground. And take a deep breath for a count of four. Now hold it for a count of four. And let it go for a count of four. Now open your eyes and come back to me. I start every workshop that I do because my work is all, all around changing how people are working, changing their environment, or helping them change in some drastic way. When we do that, when we take these deep breaths in, and especially if you do the box breathing, where you're breathing in for a count of four, you're holding it in for a count of four, and you're letting for a count of four, it actually tricks your mind from being in a fixed mind state. So when we're below the line, we're in a fixed mind state. There is not enough. I am not enough. Right? So what's happening? I want to dig a little bit deeper into what I call psychological assessment versus committed action. Step one of this training is mindset, because without the mindset, we cannot get to the actions that we need to take. So when we are in a fixed mindset or in psychological assessment, we believe that there is no possibility. This is the way it is. It's just a matter of fact. When we're in committed action, we believe there is possibility. When something happens in my life, I just see it as a neutral event. And I give interpretation and meaning to that event. And I pause and I don't react, but rather I respond. This is quite difficult to get to, but that's what it means to get out of psychological assessment, out of being triggered and into committed action, right? This is critical. Circumstances dictate my action. 
What are circumstances, you guys? Circumstances are reasons, stories, excuses, evidence, my past. Well, I did this before and I failed, so I'm not going to do it again. Or I don't know if I'm going to fail or succeed, but based on my history, X, Y, Z, I'm not going to, right? That is so different. That's living from the past. And a huge part of this training is living and creating for the future. Every single day we have a choice to make and we're either doing one or the other. We are either creating our life in the future and having a future vision. What I call is a commitment, a declaration that dictates our action. So every day we can wake up and make a declaration. Today is a new day and here's how it's going to be. Or we can live in the drift. Have you guys heard of this term, the drift before? Do you know what it means to kind of live in the drift? The drift is just faith. You know, whatever life takes me, I'm just going to follow faith. And we just keep repeating and doing the same exact thing. And so we create from our history. I am my history. I am fixed. I continue to recreate my past. Guys, this was me for so long. I literally dated the same narcissistic guy, I think like four times. Just different names, different faces. But I was recreating my past. And so how do we get out of that, right? Opportunity is in committed action. I am my word. I believe in the possibility that I can create. I believe that every single day I wake up, if you're like me and you believe in God, it's an opportunity that God has given me to create the future now. And I show up in action. I show up committed. The other side of this is breakdowns will happen. So what happens when you have a breakdown? You cover up despair, fear, you quit, right? I had a lovely breakdown with my webinar. Thank you, Ioma, for helping me recognize it. But I set up a new form, right? This was super funny to me. I set up, well, it's maybe not funny, but that's how I took it, right? Because I just, I just, I've learned to embrace breakdowns. But Ioma said, hey, Summer, I signed up for your webinar, but I didn't get an email. And I'm like, what? How? I have the emails automatically set up, just hired a new VA. That's what, and so it was like, all right, I had this, I had this breakdown and I had a choice. What can I do? I could either cover it up, be in fear, despair, and go into what's wrong with them. Why didn't he get it right? What's wrong with me? I can go into victim thinking, right? Or I can embrace the breakdown. Okay, who do I get to be to make a difference now? What can I do to make it work, right? So I sent a message back to Ioma and I said, thank you so much for signing up. I'll get an email to you in an hour. And I sure did. I sent another email out. I also sent a text message to ensure that everyone got notified. But my point being is that was a small thing, right? But let's think about bigger things. Are you in victim thinking or are you in victor thinking? Especially the bigger things, you guys. I had to like convert some super huge trauma that I've gone through in my life, right? And I just decided, hey, I can embrace this and I can see what was the lesson, what was the strength. And so this is all about being able to access our power. You are powerful. You were put here on this earth for a reason, to create something incredible. What is that? Are you accessing your power or are you accessing comfort? Comfort is what keeps us surviving as the drift. I have so much more to go into about surviving as the drift, but I am going to move us forward so you guys can get the full thing of this. But basically the way that I want you to understand it is surviving as the drift is that I wake up every day and I just believe that fate Whatever is happening is happening. I kind of have the schedule and I keep going, but I don't actually consciously think about what is the purpose of my life? What is it that I want to create? So living life as a leader means actions, creating without evidence, right? You don't need to have authority or agreement from other people or approval from other people. You get to stand in the drift. 
you can be different, right? I, Sarah, my, my lovely cousin is here and I just want to shout her out, right? Sarah, if I may, I hope this is not picking on you, but Sarah did an incredible thing. She was one of the top interior designers in the world. And she decided, you know what? That's not really what I want to do. And so she just followed her passion. And now she owns this incredible company. Sarah, if you could throw the link in the chat, I would love for everyone to get access to it. But um, she opened up a company and started making essential oils. She realized that that's what she loved. And she made a completely new product to the market that's never existed and created essential oils that smell like back home, that smell like places that she's been, it smells that don't really exist in essential oils, right? They're mostly like peppermint and orange. And she created something so incredible. And so I just, we can do so much when we believe, when we start to create and stand in that drift. So today, I want you to go in the chat or you can unmute if you're here and you can speak up and let me know, are you willing to be in committed action? Yes. 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 Awesome. Yes. Yes. I love it. Right. So we cannot, if we don't shift our mindset, we cannot shift our life. And so let's get started. You guys, what is it that I teach organizations every day for how to achieve super high performing teams, a super high performing organization, and how can you use it in your life? One clarity. We have a clear vision for the future and know what is important right now. That is number one. Do we know what is the vision from a future and what is important right now? Number two, focus. We have a disciplined commitment to our priorities. I cannot tell you how many times I've set goals for my life and said this was important. I remember doing this, um, you know, I think it was five or six years after I got married, then I got engaged, I got divorced. And, and I told myself that I get to make, I get to make having a partner in life a priority. But I was so busy with work. I wasn't meeting people. I wasn't dating it was like, what was I doing? How was I going to meet this special partner when I was doing nothing to create that, right? So focus. We have a disciplined commitment to our priorities. Now, when you are inconsistent, right? You, you do it sometimes. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Here's the thing. If it's for your work, you're not going to miss a beat. You're going to get your goals done because someone is holding you accountable. What if you were to do that in your own life? What if you were to become predictable in your execution and produce incredible, measurable results? This is what I teach my clients. This is why they use agility. At the middle of it, you get this remarkable life. This training on coming up with clarity does not come from me. It comes from Patrick Lencioni, that is the author of the book, The Advantage, as well as the author of five um, keys to building a high-performing team. So one of my favorite authors, and I follow him closely, some of this training is very much related to what he teaches. So why agility? Think about if this is what happens in organizations, what can you do with it in your life? So agility generates 30% higher profits. An overwhelming majority of executives, 88%, cite organizational agility as a key to global success. Other studies support this idea as well. There was a research conducted, you guys, at MIT that suggests that agile firms grow revenue 37% faster and generate 30% higher profits than non-agile. When I'm brought into organizations to coach them to move to agility quite fast in a year, in a year, I've seen organizations double their profit. Why? Because people are happier working there. People understand the purpose. There is more innovation. And so how do we take this and apply it to our own life? 
Leadership agility happens at three levels. Self, growth mindset, getting out of that psychological assessment, getting into that committed action. Can you see how if an organization has individuals that think that way, we are so much more powerful? How much time do we spend blaming other people, blaming circumstances? Blame, we can't do that, right? And what if we were to shift our leadership from being commanding control, using our authority to being more of a servant leader, really showing up and saying, I'm here to serve the people that work for me. How many people would be so much more happier, right? What if we were to up our skills, start listening, start not just welcoming feedback, soliciting feedback, being hungry for feedback, because we know that under that feedback is our opportunity to grow. Think of yourself today when you get feedback, how do you react? Are you defensive? Or do you just take it and say, yeah, okay, that part works. I'll take that part in and forget the rest, right? Vision and accountability, which I'm gonna walk you guys through a lot of exercises that will help you with this. I wanna also share with you what I teach to organizations. So at the team level, what I teach leaders is that they need to create safety. They need to foster collaboration. They need to be super focused, laser focused. I actually give them a timeline. So it's a 24 hour turnaround time. If a team member raises an impediment to you as a leader, you have 24 hours to resolve that. If you can't resolve it, you need to escalate it up. And finally, accountability, right? How do we hold ourselves and others accountable? Finally, at the organizational level, what we do there is we build organizational systems, we model the culture, and we help change leadership. Today, our focus is going to be on you. It's going to be on self and some of the keys that we can practice for our own life, for our own businesses to get to where we need to. So, Let's talk a little bit about how managers are promoted today. I'm a great contributor, promote me, right? Most leaders today are managers, they are not leaders. And unfortunately they get promoted simply because they did a really great job. Let me tell you guys a quick story if I may. I worked at Wells Fargo Bank, I think I was 15. I don't even think they were supposed to hire me but they hired me because I just, God, and I knew somebody. And by the time they decided to make me a manager, I was 60. Do you think I knew anything about leadership? Nope, I did not. I was just the number two salesperson nationwide for Wells Fargo. I was really good at sales. I was really connect good at connecting with people. I love being a teller. Being a teller meant I got to connect with all the customers. Then they sent me to the back. You no longer get to talk to customers now because you're so good. We want you to make everyone else good. I don't know how to make everyone else good. All I know is what I do. So what do you think I did? Boy, was I the worst leader they could have ever hired. I stood behind all the tellers and I watched them. <laughs> and if any of them did not make an offer or didn't talk to the customer, I would go behind them and say, why did you talk to them? You could have made an offer. You had an opportunity. I tried to be nice about it but I was so overbearing. You can see how that style of leadership is very commanding control, right? Somebody who's standing behind you, who's pushing, just was not good, it was not good. So we're asking leaders to switch from problem solving, being Samara at Wells Fargo, switch away from that, to being a facilitator, to being a coach, right? A coach does not go out on the field with you, <laughs> right? They stand in the back. They coach you from a distance. And what is a sign of a great coach? They ask powerful questions. Coaches ask you powerful questions. So I ask you, what do you do with yourself today? Are you being commanding control within yourself? Are you constantly criticizing yourself, pushing yourself? Or are you being a coach? Are you asking powerful questions of how can I make a change? Trust, right? Trust is at the heart of it. Can we trust people to get the right work done? But most importantly, how do I create trust within myself, you guys? How do I trust myself? 
So again, as I said, the opportunity here is move from problem solver to coaching teams to solve problems. Where do managers focus today and where would we like them to focus? Managers oftentimes focus on providing expertise, solving problems, transferring knowledge to others. They focus on being the subject matter expert. They also focus a huge part of their day on work management and fighting firefighting. Get work done, resource allocation, shuffling people around, task management, and tracking all the firefighting. It's not effective. I want you guys to learn this so that when you lead an organization, you know what is an effective way of leading. As a leader, you are effective when you focus on process improvement. Improve processes, be more strategic. What you're doing when you're being a subject matter expert in work management and firefighting is you are being tactical. So how do we do that in our own life? How do we stop just being a firefighter who's constantly reacting to everything that's coming in? How do we look at our own process in our life and improve it? That is the challenge for today. And finally, develop people. Actually be a people manager. What does that mean? Grow individuals. Provide one-on-one -on -one coaching that doesn't look like what were your tasks? And how are you doing on your tasks and give me a status update? But it looks like career development. It looks like actually caring about the individual and their confidence and building them up. How many have worked with leaders that do one or the other? When you think of a leader in your head that was more of the subject matter expert, was fighting fires and didn't do anything to grow individuals, right? It's such a negative impact. So this is what the future of work is. When we say leadership agility, I want you guys to learn what we tell leaders to focus on and how we can use that in our own life. So what is leadership agility? Leadership the agility is the work of energizing, empowering, and enabling teams to rat rapidly and reliably be able to deliver business value. How do we do this? We engage customers. We make customers a part of our process rather than just an afterthought. We move away from contract negotiations to continuously learning with our clients and adapting to an ever-changing environment. So as you guys think about this, let me ask you a quick question. If you can, you can go in the chat, by the way, or just go to slido.com, that same link that I sent earlier, I'm going to send it again, and tell me. Think in your mind of a leader. I want you to know that we're all leaders in some way. You could be a leader that is a parent. That's leadership. You could be a leader in your circle of friends. That's leadership. Think of someone in your circle. Think of behaviors of, think, think of unhealthy behaviors of a leader. Think of a leader that you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to leave this company. They are driving me insane and put that in the, in the uh, results. Let me activate this one. Okay, it's active now. So go ahead, I wanna hear your thoughts. Elena, I love that. Reactive instead of responsive. Controlling and not open-minded. Yeah, the summer at Wells Fargo. <laughs> I think that experience is what made me fall in love with learning leadership. <laughs> what else? What else do you notice that are behaviors of unhealthy leadership? And think about the impact that it has on the family, that it has on the culture. Okay, let's hear some positives. What are some positives? What are some behaviors of healthy leaders? They truly listen, right? They don't listen to respond. We're gonna talk about that today. Works with others. Yeah, they're collaborative. So I want to share with you guys a few of the top unhealthy leadership behaviors. Is open to new ideas. I love that. So I'm going to share with you just a few on here that really stick out to me. Planting weeds, fostering a negative culture. They don't seek input or take input from others. 
status quo, no effort to improve processes, right? Uh, they don't invest in learning. They have that commanding control style of leadership that I talked about earlier, right? They're consistently shuffling people between priorities and teams. They don't have clarity on vision, right? My favorite one that I really just want to touch on today is what does it mean to plant weeds and foster a negative culture versus plant seeds? When we are planting weeds, what we're doing is we're going to someone, let's say I'm going to go to Cassidy. Ioma doesn't know I'm doing this right, but I'm going to say, hey, Cassidy, did you hear what Ioma said about you the other day? Yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think, I can go and say something that has nothing to do, like it's not gossipy, but I could say, you know, I just don't think that I almost doing a good job with this. Sorry, I'm not picking on you today, right? Go to Elena and say that. What happens when we do that? We're planting a weed. We're fostering a negative culture. So what would it look like to build healthy culture, right? it would be fostering seeds. I actually say something positive about that person. Or when someone comes to me, and this took me a long time to do because sometimes, especially when you're working in a corporate environment, gossip is kind of like the way to do life. Everybody's gossip. And so people would come to me with all of these negative things. And you know, I just stay quiet. I wasn't really stepping into my leadership, right? And when I started stepping into my leadership, I just realized anytime somebody came to me with something negative or said something negative in our room, I would do my best to plant a seed and say something positive that I saw. And it was hard because sometimes I didn't really like the person they were talking about. It wasn't someone that I got along with, but that was my challenge to myself is I will not be a part of creating an unhealthy culture. So I want you to think about that in your own life right? Not just in a work environment, but in your own life. How can you show up more healthy? How can you maintain focus? And what happens when you're multitasking, you guys? We're not really multitasking. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, I want to take us to, to um, just a little bit about servant leadership, and then I want to take us to step two. So we did step one, we understand the mindset. Yes, what is this mindset? It's a mindset of a servant leader. No matter who you're speaking to, no matter what it is that you're doing, you're thinking, how can I serve? How can I create a win-win? Understand that you need to serve yourself first. So it doesn't mean that you become a doormat that everyone can walk over. I don't like when people misunderstand that that's what servant leadership is. It's not. It's about creating a win-win in all of, in, in all the ways that we can, right? So they act with humility. They do not need to use their authority. They show vulnerability. They don't have to have all the answers, right? They say, oh, I don't know that. Or, oh, I was wrong. Oh, I made a mistake. Let me go fix that. Why? Because that creates trust. That builds a community around you. And you guys... Even for us as entrepreneurs, I know so many of you in this room might be an entrepreneur like me, and you kind of feel alone. You can't succeed alone. We need to create a support system around us. It's a huge part of why I created Women Leading Powerfully. Facebook group is so that people have people to reach out to for community, and people have people that they can grow with. They value diverse opinions. Without diverse perspectives, you're getting everything based on a bias, based on privilege, right? We have to allow room for diverse opinions and value those. And that is easy to do at work. And it's easy for us to say, yes, 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 I definitely want to do that at work. Sometimes it's hard when you have your own very fixed ideas and beliefs. This is about being able to question those beliefs. Why? Because some of those beliefs are the same ones that they're telling you you're not good enough. And you're believing them and they're not serving you in any way to believe that you're not good enough. But yet we sit there and we continue to believe them. Because we're believing in a system that's not serving us. So other things about servant leaders is that they make sure that the team has what it needs to get its work done and they remove impediments so the team can get their work done. What's the difference between 
a fixed and a growth mindset. I shared a lot about this today, right? With the psychological assessment versus committed action with being above the line or below the line. But I wanna end today by saying here, this is it. It's about moving from being in a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, right? If you wanna continue down this webinar, everything that I'm about to teach you, everything that we're about to do will take you in being in a growth mindset and able to truly be able to embrace it and make it work in your life. And again, as I said, we go in between these two different mindsets. You are never always at a growth mindset. In one day, I probably get triggered and go into a fixed mindset multiple times. <clears throat> Yesterday, as I was creating this webinar for you, here, I will share something pretty vulnerably. I didn't sleep last night. so. It was so important for me. I went into my perfectionism, which is my command and control style. I'll explain the roots of command and control in a second. But I did that, right? I said, you know what? I'm just going to cancel it. No one's going to show up. Everybody said it's Memorial Day. I'm just going to cancel it. No one's going to care. I don't need to show up for this. I can't do this. It's not going to be good. What if they don't like it? How do I really take these? Anyways, I just went into complete fixed mindset. I'm going to give up, victim, resignation. And it took for me to go into, I commit it to something. I am going to make it happen. It doesn't matter how many hours it takes me. It doesn't matter what it takes. And this is where I want you guys to be. Can you commit to something and make it happen? Can you believe enough in yourself and your declaration to say nothing can get in my way? If I declared it, if it is to be, it's up to me and go ahead and make that happen. So everyone ready? Everyone in the right mindset to go through this training? Let's do our vision, yes? Okay, so step one, what was it? Your mindset, and that's at the heart of everything. Step two, let's go into some action and actually start to create our vision. So here is a question that I want you to ask yourself. If you're listening to this later, then pause the recording and make sure you actually do this exercise. If you're here with me now, go ahead and do this exercise. What does your best week look like? Seriously think back and think about a week that you loved, that was powerful, where you felt just happy, you felt productive. What did that week look like? Go ahead and journal that. Again, if you guys don't have a journal, I really invite you to have a journal for the exercises that we're gonna do today. And then the second thing that I want you to be thinking about is what does your worst week look like? So take a moment and drop down. What does your best week look like? What does your worst week look like? And if someone is brave enough to come off you and share, I would love to hear it. Well, um, my best week was um, very productive. I did, I listed out everything that I wanted to do and like my goals for the week. And I actually accomplished it because I pushed myself. And my work worst week is pretty much the opposite. Um, it was kind of too relaxed and I didn't really do much. I felt very unproductive. Cassidy! Give you a hand of applause. Thank you for your courage and thank you for sharing, my dear. So uh, I almost said best week when I was productive and interacting with others and doing what I love to, right? So what is it that makes personal agility so effective? This is the personal agility manifesto. This is the values that we believe in you guys. We are uncovering better ways of living our lives by doing it and helping others do it. So if you're here today and you're learning this, I'll ask you to take it and to teach others. Through this work, we have come to value, setting a vision for our life over letting fate have its way, over living in the drift. Getting help, I'm not sure why this says working software. Working software is the agile one, but it's not working software. It's asking others for help, 
being supported over trying to do it all ourselves. Being supported, asking for help, getting things done over wasting away our days. Looking internally over blaming others. Look at your best week versus your worst week. Look at what you wrote down. That is, while many of us live on the right, we choose to live on the left. When you look at your best week, does it look like it's on the left or on the right? I know moments even when I'm in breakdown, when I am crying and not feeling good because we're not always going to, to be happy and, and life is good, right? But when I am supported, when I reach out for support, I feel that much better than when I try to just get through it on my own, right? And so it's so important to be thinking about these things as you are going through life. So I'm going to edit this real quick, y'all, because breakdown, recognize my breakdown. <sighs> Oh man, oh man. Okay, never mind. Partnering with others over trying to do it all ourselves. Okay. So I told you today I was going to talk about six questions of personal agility that are super powerful that I truly believe that if you use this framework in your life every day, you will achieve incredible results. Number one, what really matters? Take a moment and ask yourself that, right? Every week, ask the big question first. What really matters for me this year? What do I wanna achieve this year? You guys, for some of us, I know a lot of us do our, um, our every year we do our, um, what is it called? New year resolution, right? New year resolution is supposed to be, what do I wanna create this year? And we make it a little bit unachievable, a little bit unattainable, and, and oftentimes we don't get to it, right? I don't actually set my new year resolution on New Year's Eve. I set it on my birthday because that's the day I was born. And so my birthday is coming up in five days, and I'm super excited because I get to set my new year resolution again, right? Something that I've started doing lately is I realized, honestly, especially after COVID and this pandemic hit, things are moving too fast. What used to be a, a, being able to set a year priority, my, my goals are changing rapidly. And so what I invite you to do is maybe just set a goal for three months. Here's the deal. Whatever you set for yourself to do in three months, you get to be committed to that. And how do you do that? Every single week, you know who you are and what you did to be who you are. You know stuff done closer to who you want to be. That is just the difference. That is the shift that we need to make to move from whatever it is that we're living today to this new state that we want to create. So here's the process. I want to walk you guys through it. This is the execution, right? Today we're really, I mean, right now I really want to focus you on what really matters, which is the vision. But the second part of it is what did I do last week? Now, here is what you do when you ask yourself this question. You don't get to beat yourself up. No matter what you did, you celebrate. And you choose your life. Based on that, based on what I did, let me celebrate. Let me give myself a bat on the back. And here's the deal, you guys. Sometimes what you needed to do was rest. What you needed to do is not do much. Because what you committed to was taking care of your health. That gets to be one of your goals. Okay? If you choose it. What could I do this week? Number four, this question is critical. What is important, urgent, or makes me happy? So what do I really want to focus on, right? Number five, what do I want to get done? Choose what you want to get done. And then number six is so critical. Who can help me? So that, in a nutshell, is the six questions of personal agility that we ask every single week. All of my clients that work with me, this is what we go through this process every single week so that they can create their vision. But first, we start with a vision. So very few people or companies can clearly articulate why they do what they do. Have you guys watched this video by Simon Sinek on why? 
it is so powerful. So if you have not looked it up, just type Simon Sinek Y on YouTube after this webinar and watch this training. It's so powerful. What he explains is that I want you guys to think about something, right? If I tell you that Dell computers are so much better than Apple, who wants to fight me right now? Who's mad about that? The reality is they are. But the thing is, people are attached to Apple. Why? Because what they're buying isn't just the computer and what it can do for them. They're buying a brand. They're buying what it's associated with. Slickness. I'm more creative because I use Apple. That is what it means to have a why at your core that is so deep that people connect to it. So I want you to be thinking about that when you're thinking about what's my brand? What's my why? Why do I do what I do? What is it that I truly believe in? What's the purpose? What's the cause, right? Okay. Would it be helpful if I gave you guys an exercise to help you get there? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Let's do this together. First, meditation is easy. If you've been in this mind state of I can't meditate, meditation is hard. I don't know how to meditate. When I'm meditating, thoughts come in and out. Just breathe and come back to your breath. I invite you to not judge your thoughts and just let them flow in and out. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take you guys through a meditation. All I ask of you is just participate. The only way you ever get anything out of anything is by participating. So Go ahead and participate, okay? I'm going to play some light meditation music in the background here as I guide you through. If you feel like I can't do it, I want you to just keep telling yourself, yes, I can, yes, I can, and keep trying to follow the visualization that I'm giving you, okay? This is a visualization exercise. I invite you all to join me by closing your eyes. I want you to imagine that you're sitting in a movie theater. The lights are dim, and the movie's about to start. And you're so excited, and you can't wait for this movie to start. Close your eyes. Imagine walking down the stairs of the movie theater. Finding your seat in the movie theater. It's a movie of you. You're shocked when the movie starts. It's you. And it's a year from today. And you are doing perfectly what it is that you want to do better. You see as much detail as you can create. Look down at your feet. Where are you standing? Are you in an ocean? Are you in sand? Are you in a house? Where are you standing? Feel the feeling of that floor on your feet. What are you wearing? What do you smell? What's the expression on your face? What's your body moving like? Are you dancing? Are you laying down? Where are you? Look up at this screen and really feel yourself there. What's the environment that you're in? Feel yourself there. Are there any people surrounding you? Who's around you? What are the sounds that you're hearing? Is it traffic? Is it music? Are other people talking? Are people cheering you on and celebrating what you just created? And finally, recreate in your body any feeling that you think you would be experiencing as you engage in this activity. There you are on the big screen. 
your living, your life in this future state that you've been hoping to create. Now, I want you to visualize that you're gonna get up out of your chair. You're gonna walk towards this movie screen. As I count down, you're getting closer and closer to the movie screen. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, you're getting so close to the movie screen. Three, two, one. Now, you open the door, you're part of the movie. You can experience everything that you just experienced, but you're not watching it anymore. You're there. You're now experiencing the whole thing again from inside of yourself. You look out and you're amazed by your environment, by the people that are around you. It's no longer a distant image. You are embodying the person on the screen. You're feeling their feelings. See everything in vivid detail. Visualize in your mind, look around. What do you see in those vivid details? Who's around you? What are the sounds you're hearing? How do you feel? What are those feelings? Embody those feelings. Finally, Walk back out of the screen. That's still showing the picture of you performing perfectly. Walk back slowly and return to your seat in the movie theater. Reach out now and grab the screen. Actually, physically reach out your hand and grab the screen. Grab the screen. Do you have it? Is it in your hand? Now shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down until it's a cracker size. Now you have this cracker in your hand. Then bring it up to your mouth. Taste it. Taste it. Taste what that tiny piece felt like, just like a hollow breath. Swallow it, chew it up. Contain the full picture of you living in that beautiful future, performing incredibly. Imagine all the little screens of everything you just saw traveling through your stomach and out into your bloodstream, into every cell of your body. Then imagine that every cell of your body is lit up with a movie of you performing perfectly. It's like one of those door window appliances where 50 televisions are all tuned to the same channel. That's what I want you to imagine. If you walk into this one, there's 50 televisions and they're all tuned to the same channel. Now, that is you. That is what you will create. Slowly, slowly. Now you are one with that image on the screen. Come back to me. Open your eyes. Now I want you to take the moment and journal what you just saw. Take the time that you need to journal down exactly what you saw. One of the most powerful things that I love to do when I do this exercise is I actually like to draw 
I don't care if you're not great at drawing. Draw, take pictures from magazines. Uh, that's what I have on my wall. I wish I could turn the camera around and show you guys, but that's what I have on my wall is lots of pictures from magazines. And I just want you to know there is a power of actually putting what you just wrote in front of you visually. So what I invite you to do after is take a moment to write down what we're about to do in your notebook as well. And then maybe write down some pictures, maybe actually just draw what you just saw because that makes it that much more of your reality. Okay, so that was it. That was step two, coming up with your vision. Did you guys find that powerful? Yay, beautiful, awesome, love it. All right, now, I am so glad that you guys enjoyed that meditation. It is one of the most powerful meditations. I truly believe in it. It has helped me so much with just realizing what I want in my future to be able to really visualize it. And more importantly, to make it real by truly embodying it in our body. So now you are going to do one last exercise with me. This just came to me. And when things come to me, I just believe that they'll serve somebody. I want you to leave behind and you're actually going to physically, let me do this so you guys can see it. You're actually going to stand up. Again, if you're driving, don't do this now. You're gonna actually physically stand up and you're going to look behind you and say, that was now, that was then, this is now. I want you to do the physical motion. That was then, this is now. This is now is what you just visualized. This is now is what just came to you as the new you. This is now, that was then. This is now, that was then. I know this seems silly, but working with your body is how you actually embody and bring into yourself what you want to create. So that is your vision. That's what we get to create. Now I'm going to help you with a process of taking this vision that I help my clients with, I have organizations with, and making it into a measurable outcome. So you guys, there is something that is important in life. It is to balance our feminine energy with our masculine energy. You don't care if you're a female or a male. You need to balance those two energies. So the exercise that we just did was very feminine. It was about just allowing things to be in allowing things to come to us. What we're gonna go into is a little bit more masculine. It's about numbers and it's about actually getting those measurable results. So what I've found in my life is being able to balance those two energies is at the core of being able to achieve results. So who are you now? You are that visualization. You are that vision of the future that you just have. Now let's move into some measurable outcomes. So organizations usually create three-year outcomes. At the portfolio level, they'll create one-year outcome. In every quarter, they're going to create quarterly outcomes. Now, every week, we're going to create, what's my weekly goal? What's my weekly outcome? That's what I'm inviting you to do. So I invite you to create all the way from one year to quarterly to weekly. The mistake many people make is that they create one year outcome, not just people, organizations make this mistake all the time. They create three year outcomes or one year outcomes and then they go to doing the work. And what happens if I don't actually break my outcome down into smaller outcomes, it's actually overwhelming and I start doing work that's unrelated to my outcome at all. And then a year passes by, a month passes by, and it's like, oh, I said I was going to write a book and I haven't written a chapter yet because I said I was going to write a book. But if I said I was going to write two chapters in the next three months, and then I broke that down into, I'm going to write an outline for those two chapters this week, right? You don't have to spend a whole bunch of time this is something that's really important. So you guys, as I'm doing everything that you see here, 
I want you guys to get to know me a little bit. I have a full-time responsibility as a management consultant, as an executive, working with clients every single day. I do that for probably 50 hours. But this is what I'm passionate about. So I still make time for it. Doesn't need to be all my time, but I've carved out every single week on Fridays, I work on my personal goal. So if you work for a company today, you spend 40 hours working on their goal. How many hours are you willing to dedicate to working on your goal? Not theirs. That's how we end up creating incredible visions and make them true. So as I said, most people start with a one-year outcome. That's usually their new year resolution. And then they go about doing the work. They have good intentions, but the reality is if you don't break your actual outcome into smaller outcomes and into weekly goals, you're not going to hit it. It's like, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so today we are going to plan. OKRs. OKRs is what Google uses. It's what LinkedIn uses. It's what Amazon uses. It's what every successful organization you can think about is hiring me for top dollars to use. Why? Because it's a better way to measure impact and value. What is an outcome? An outcome is a result sought out by a business strategy or a direction. What you're trying to achieve. So guess what your outcome is going to be? It's not going to be maybe the entire thing that you just visualized. But if it was a year out, maybe it is. Because again, we're going to start by setting an annual outcome. From that, you're going to break it into a quarterly outcome. And from that, you're going to break it into a weekly out, a weekly goal. Okay, I don't call it an outcome at that point. I just call it a goal. So what gets to be a part of your outcome, you guys? This is so important. It needs to be specific. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be meaningful, right? My value, so this says business value is realized when outcome is achieved. What's the value that you're trying to achieve? Hi, Claudette. Welcome in, my love. It's so good to see you, right? So what are outcomes? Outcomes are things that are valuable in my life. It's that visualization that you just did with me. That's what's valuable. That's what showed up for you. Trust your intuition. Trust what just came up for you. They are planned. They are slowly changing. And they align our work to a common strategy. So without a strategy, that's what I'm trying to teach you guys. How do I set a strategy for my life so I actually crush my goals? This is how I do it. So let me just share with you guys really quick. What is the difference between an outcome and an output? Because people get this confused. Would it be helpful if I shared with you my outcome? What my outcome has been for 2021? So I believe that by launching a new business focused on my core calling of supporting individuals to transform their life, I will create financial freedom for myself and family and enjoy work. That was my outcome for 2021. My key results are things like improve net promoter score. That's a key result. Why? Because that has to do, a net promoter score is the question of, would you recommend working with this person to others? Or would you recommend working with this organization to others? You probably see that question all the time on surveys. That's called an MPS score, and that's why they're asking you that. I also had a goal to increase my enrollments into my program, right? Rolling out a brand new program. So really, for me, it's increase it from zero to five, right? Just want to be able to test out this beta program and ensure that's going to hit the mark. Uh, maintain customer acquisition cost under Y. So if you guys are wondering, hey, why does Summer do that summit? Because the summit is a really great way to launch your business. So if you want to learn more about that, let's definitely connect, right? A summit is a lot of amazing people that will learn about you from other people and you'll be recommended to them. So it's powerful. It's a powerful way to get out there if you're wanting to launch a business. Improve happiness 
self-assessment. So you notice that something that I wrote in this is that I enjoy work. I have loved what I've done. I love being a management consultant. But during COVID, I realized that it wasn't my core calling. You ever feel that thing inside of you that's just like itching at you and it like won't let you go? You're like, but I'm good. But I make really good money. Why do we have to change? You're like trying to talk yourself out of it. And it's like, nope, nope, this is not what you're meant to do. You're meant for more. And finally, it was just like, felt like God was saying like, there is people waiting for you. There is something you're supposed to do and you're not doing it. And I was like, okay, I can't die with this in my heart. So for me, that's what I get to measure because I felt fulfilled, but I wasn't fully fulfilled. So I invite you to have a survey for yourself as well. I am going to make an offer here pretty soon to all of you guys to join um, a pretty powerful program that I have where you can actually take the same survey that I take and measure where are you at. Be very transparent about that. And finally, beta pro program success rate for all my participants needs to go from X to Y. So whatever they're achieving, I want that to continue to grow tremendously, right? I'm really, really invested in anyone that joins my program having such an example. So, okay, guys, you saw that was an outcome. These are my key results. Did you guys see an example of that? Let me tell you what is not an outcome. Launch leadership agility webinar. That's a task. Why am I doing that, right? So I have to ask myself, why am I doing that? And why I'm doing that is to increase enrollments. Being really transparent here, you guys, because I want you to understand the process of thinking when you're running a business, right? Host leadership, host women leading powerfully summit. Why did I want to do that? Maintain customer acquisition costs down. Does that make sense to you guys? So when you're running a business, you have to be thinking in this kind of way. Why am I doing that? How is that going to help me with launching my business? Offer leadership agility mastermind beta. Why am I doing that? Well, I need to test that the program really works. So I need to offer it at a really attractive price, right? Get website page created for a summit, not an outcome, an output. So something that I am asking you to notice when you're doing this in your own for your own life are you, are you looking at outputs? Because that's the work again. You're going to get lost in the work. Come back to the outcome. Come back to your why. And the best way to think about it is your why doesn't change. Does that make sense, you guys? So if you are running a business, I just wanted to show you guys some terms and examples of what we use in, in, in actually like starting a new business, right? So test it. These are experiments. Actually, you could do this in, in your life as well, right? I do this in my life all the time. Hey, I'm going to experiment. Actually, I did this recently. I started a new workout program. Not recently. Sorry, it's been a while. But now I, I would say I'm scaling it. So I started a new workout pro program at this place called Orange Theory Fitness. Uh, first, I was like, I'm just going to test this out. I'm just going to go for a week. I'll pay per class. Because for me, it was like, man, this is so expensive. I don't know if this is going to work for me right? And then it was like MVP, let's nail it, right? What is that? You're validating your idea, right? You're just finding out is this the right idea or not? So it's called a minimum viable product. But I want you to think about if I was a product, if what I was going to do was a product, what would it be? How would I, like, how would I box it up? I want you to think of your vision that way. How would I box it up and put it on a shelf, right? And the minimum marketable pro product is the big thing. So the vision that you just had in your, in your life, the vision that just came to you, that annual one, that might be your one year outcome, right? But what can you do this week? What can you do this week to get closer to it? What can you do this quarter, right? So I want you guys to be thinking, always test it, and test a few things to see if that's really the way I want to go. I'm going to nail it and then scale it. Okay, so it's not going to be real in the big thing that I'm doing until I've tested it, I've nailed it, and then I've scaled it. All right, let me show you guys an example. So launch agility brand and build the business. I believe that by launching my agility brand focused on my core calling of supporting individuals to transform their life. This is the same thing that I was just telling you earlier, right? I will create financial freedom for myself and my family. How will I measure that? 
in. This is just giving you a template. You can use the same exact template in your own life, right? I'm giving you guys this template. I will email it out to you. Um, if you joined here today, you'll get this and you can use this to create your own outcomes. Is this powerful? Taking our vision and making it into measurable outcome. Powerful stuff, right? So, so far, what have we covered? Step one, mindset. Step two, vision. Step three, taking our vision and making it into a measurable outcome. Now, let's go to step four. Step four is execute powerfully. This is that framework that I was telling you about using personal agility. Now, would you like to know the number one thing that's killing your productivity? Would that be helpful? Yes, the number one thing that kills everyone's productivity. All right, how about we try it out and see how good we're at it? Because especially us women, we think we are masters at multitasking, yeah? It kills your productivity. So let's go, let's try this out together. We're gonna play a game. I'm gonna play with you guys. No lie, I practiced before. <laughs> Trying to multitask may feel effective, but it's actually counterproductive. Can you guys hear it? Is it really low? It's doesn't really exist. Not in the way most people think about it. In my book, The Myth of Multitasking, I show that what's occurring is either backtasking or switch tasking. You backtask when something that doesn't require your attention occurs in the background, like baking bread in the oven while you make a salad. Backtasking can be productive, but the problem is most people who think they're multitasking aren't backtasking, they're switch tasking. Switch tasking occurs when you try to do two or more attention requiring tasks at the same time, like trying to watch this video while you're sending a text message. Switch tasking is everywhere and it's a thief. It robs you of time, money, and your mental and emotional health. You're going to experience firsthand what I mean in this little exercise. Grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. Turn that paper sideways and draw three evenly spaced lines across it. This gives you four empty rows. By the way, there's also a downloadable worksheet with all these instructions available at the link on the screen. But for now, a pen and paper will do. Now this exercise is timed, so don't start until I say go. You're going to recopy in the first row you're this phrase, <laughs> switch tasking is a thief. Not yet. Then in the second row, you're just going to write the numbers one through 21, one number for each letter in the phrase. Make your paper look just like what you see on the screen. I'll call out the time every five seconds so you'll know your rough finish time. Got your pen and paper in front of you? All right, you get ready, ready, get set, and go. go. Five seconds. 10 seconds. 15. 20, we'll go 10 more, 25, and 30. And most people should be done by this point. Write down your approximate finish time. Now, we're going to do this again, but we're going to simulate switch tasking, trying to perform multiple attention requiring tasks at the same time. Don't so start. you're going to, again, recopy the phrase, switch tasking is a thief, in the third row and all the numbers one through 21 in the fourth row. But this time for every letter that you write in the third row, you're going to write the corresponding number in the fourth row. So you'll write S and then one, W and then two, I and then three and so on until you make the third and fourth row look just like what you did the first time you did this. We'll time this again with me calling out the time every Wait, what, where's your numbers? I don't see any numbers in the chat. What did you guys get for the first exercise? Put your number in the chat. Did you lose count? I lost count the first time. You're good if you did. What numbers did you guys get? What knows? People lost count. Okay, come on, we'll do it. Oh, Cassidy got 30, okay. Yeah, like I said, I practiced. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? 
So you got what he said, right? We're going to write the letter and then the number. Don't cheat. All right, let's go. Every five seconds. Get your paper and your pencil ready. Get set and go. Five seconds. 10 seconds. 15. 20. 25. 30. This is where we were when we stopped last time. 35. 40. 45. 50 seconds. We'll go 10 more. 55. And 60. And if you're not done now, just give up. You just experienced a taste of the first three effects of switch tasking. First, the amount of time it takes to complete things increases. In some of your cases, up to twice as long as the first time. Second, the quality of the work decreases. Compare the work you did each time. Did you make mistakes? Did you finish on a number other than 21? Did your handwriting get worse? And third, consider how you felt the first time versus the second time. Most people, when they switch tasks, start to feel a lot of stress, even with a simple activity like this. Switch tasking is a thief. But the good news is, when you reduce switches, you'll have more free time, you'll make fewer mistakes, and you'll feel less stress. To regain control, think about your upcoming day and decide what's one task you're going to give 100% of your attention. And to learn more about how to reduce switch tasking, check out my book. The I'll let you check out his book because he's nice and he let us have this exercise. All right, what'd you guys think? How'd you do? I didn't finish. I don't know if anyone finished, but great job if you did. I did not finish. Um, so I want to just come back to this because it is so, so important. So as I talk to you about executing effectively, uh, we, are, we are in a world that is forcing us at times to be this doing the switch tasking. You guys feel that way? Your phone is beeping. An email pops up. How much switch tasking are you doing? because your effectiveness is being impacted. Think about it. That was such a simple exercise and look at how much time we've lost. We're losing our switch tasking, right? And so as it was so funny because I looked this up because I was multitasking like crazy yesterday and I realized that's why it was probably taking me double the time that it should have to, to, to finish this webinar because I was switch tasking and my husband was like, come eat, come out, watch a movie. And it was like, okay, this is crazy because now when I come back doing the webinar, I got to start all over again thinking about where did I stop. So again, I just want you guys to be thinking about your life and your productivity and pick one thing, one thing, only one thing, email me back, let me know what it is. What are you committed to focusing on this week? Just shoot me an email back. I will be your accountability partner. One thing you're not going to multitask on for ourselves. So I gave you guys the six questions. want to just give you a quick reminder of what they are. Question number one, what really matters to me? Question number two, what did I do last week? You're going to do this once a week. You're going to set a time on your calendar. You're going to be committed to yourself. Question number three, what could I do this week? Question number four, what is important? What is urgent? Or something that would make me happy, right? Something I really feel like I want to do. You celebrate and you choose your life at every one of those steps. So after you do, what did I do last week? You stop, you celebrate, you choose. What am I going to do next? After what could I do this week? You celebrate, you choose your life. What am I going to do next? Remember, we are living into our future. We no longer relive our past. And so at every moment, if you're not creating your future, guess what you're doing? You're going to recreate your past. That's just how it works. Number five. Where do I, what do I want to get done this week? I want you guys to be super specific. What is it that I want to get done this week? 
Number six, hey, who could help? Do I need to get help? I want you guys to be really honest about asking these questions to yourself, right? I cannot tell you how long I've been struggling without a VA because I decided, oh, I don't want to hire a VA yet. I don't need a VA. I know how to do technology. Yes, I know how to do technology, yet a VA would increase my performance by that much more because now I don't have to focus on the technology, right? So it's just something that I want you guys to be thoughtful of as you're going through this process. Now, let me give you what it looks like. I have this set up for my accountability group on a Trello board. Trello.com is free. Go to Trello.com if you want, and you can set up your own board, okay? This is your priority map. You need to make it visual. Now, something that I do personally is I also have something on my wall right here. It's very visual. And what matters, right? Pick three. I, I, I recommend that you do not pick four. Pick only three big life themes. So I really want you to ask yourself, what am I going to focus on in life right now? There are six categories. I'm going to send you guys a quick survey to just take and see where do you fit? What would be your themes if you had to pick, right? Business, family, God, whatever it is, just pick three big things that you want to focus on. Really, really go back to that vision that you just had when we did the visualization exercise, okay? Go back to that vision. What came up? That gets to be what goes in there for you. Okay, there's things you've always said are important. It didn't come up in your vision. It doesn't get to be included. Okay. All right. Now, this is something really, really important. What is important versus what is urgent? Important are things that open up possibility for advancing what matters. All right. Urgent, on the other hand, is tasks that if you do not do them, there is going to be something negative that happens. There's a negative consequence. Let me give you an example. If I do not pay my credit card payment, I am going to get penalties. So that's urgent. I need to pay it by a certain time. What's important to me could be writing a book. What's important to me could be launching a summit or launching a webinar. No one would know if I don't do it. It's not gonna be any negative consequences, but I'm not going to advance the things that I'm looking to advance forward. Does that make sense? So especially as an entrepreneur and you are an entrepreneur of your own life, what is important? What is urgent? Start to differentiate those. These are the six columns that I urge you to have. What matters? What is important? What is urgent? Done this week. You're actually going to write this is done this week. Not what I want to get done. Done this week. What will you get done this week? And then, of course, you're going to have a celebration column done overall where you're going to move the things that you complete that week. Does this board make sense, you guys? Any questions on this? Okay. Now, there is something that I promised you today. Would it be helpful for you to know what is the secret to trusting yourself? Why so many of us don't trust ourselves? Would that be powerful for you to know? Yes, 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 I'm seeing yes. Okay, here it is. The secret to trusting yourself is being trustworthy to yourself. When you make a commitment to yourself and you break it, yourself keeps track. So number one thing is be trustworthy to yourself. Get the things that you commit to yourself done. You commit to other people and you get these things done. You commit to work and you get these things done. And you think that yourself does not keep track, but yourself does keep track. It knows that you keep saying that you're going to do this thing, that you're going to work out, that you're going to eat healthy, that whatever it is that you're putting in your life that you're not doing, yourself is keeping track of that. So what you need to do is get things done, be effective, achieve your long-term goals. The way to develop in your personal agility as well is really important is be a catalyst. Coach others to solve challenges, right? So not only do you get to be accountable to yourself, and that's at the secret of trusting yourself, but be a leader. Once you get good at doing this, if you can create more people like you around you, you can create that support system, it's going to be that much more effective. This is why my clients get incredible results is because we transform entire organizations to be in this mindset. 
So build around alignment around what really matters, be a leader and encourage others to follow this and, and do this with you. Cheryl, hello, welcome in my love. Good to see you. All right, you guys, there is three roles in personal agility. Would you like to know what those are? Would that be helpful? Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> All right, what does that mean? Me, what really matters? This is your inner product owner. I want you to start differentiating me, myself, and I. What really matters? Why should you do this and not that? When you're in me, that's the mindset that you're in. Think of your me as the person who sets your priorities, right? The person that keeps you anchored to that vision, okay? Myself is your inner team. You are always yourself. You do the work of your life. No one else can do it for you. And finally, I, that is your inner celebration coach, okay? That's that powerful person that's going to be a coach for you. You can get an outside coach or you can do this yourself, right? This is the person that's going to work with you once a week, ask you powerful questions at the weekly celebrate and choose event. What have you accomplished? High five yourself. If you're going to do this with yourself, then high five yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. Do not forget to celebrate. The next question you're going to ask your, your coach is going to ask you, or again, this is you're going to step into I and I is going to be the coach. It's going to be what is important slash urgent. Here's another important part that I plays. I sometimes has to repi remind me to not be so hard on myself. Write that down. I sometimes has to remind me not to be so hard on myself. You did the best that you could. And that's all you can do. So you're going to celebrate. Remember what I said? You're going to celebrate whatever you accomplished. You're going to celebrate it. There is no this whole judgment, shame, guilt. Guys, we need to throw that out. When that exists, it does not help us. It does not allow us to be in our leadership. Those energies are not serving in any way. Okay? If you have a coach that's doing that to you, that's not serving. Okay? Okay? So whether you think you can or you think you can, you're, you're right. So just think you can, right? So that, that's why that mindset is such a critical part of this. Okay. All right, guys. Your daily, daily, if you want to take a stretch. So this is me stretching you into what I do. This is a daily stretch, right? So instead of just checking in once a week, what I would tell you to do is check in every single day, every day when you wake up in the morning. What did you get done yesterday? What is the most important thing to get done today? And even if you don't write it down, even if you say, I don't have time, I'm not going to write it down. I promise you, if you just take a second and do this mentally in your head, you're going to set an intention for the day. There is nothing more powerful than setting an intention every single morning for your day. So set your intention and unblock. If that's difficult, who could help? If that's difficult, where do I need to ask someone else or delegate or ask for help, right? I don't have to do everything myself. So with that, I am going to end on step number five. Step number five is check-in and accountability, okay? That's step number five, check-in and accountability. It's that simple. There's three pillars of personal impact. Capability number one, remember, to trust ourselves, we've got to start doing the things that we commit to, so get things done. If you're all talk and no action, who will pay attention to you? Who will trust you? And remember, yourself keeps track of broken commitments as well. Pillar number two, prioritize, get the right things done. It is so powerful when we can prioritize, stop multitasking, switch tasking, and actually focus and get the right things done. So you should do many things. Some of them matter and some of them don't. You need to prioritize so you can choose the ones that matter, okay? And finally, pillar number three is create alignment. Listen. You are not living this life on your own. Many of you are married. 
you have husbands, you have kids, you have families around you, figure out who you need to create alignment with. Because if you're moving in one direction and your partner is moving in another direction, you're consistently going to be guided off track. If you're young, I'm saying this for Cassidy because I know Cassidy's here pretty young, right? If you're young and you have your friendship group around you, that matters as well, right? Are people in my circle moving me in alignment towards my goal or not? And how do you find that out? You ask them powerful questions, right? How many, do we ever stop and pause and just ask our significant others, hey, what's your vision for the future? Where do you wanna go? And really listen, really listen to what they're saying, right? And take from it, don't try to argue with it. Well, that's not my vision. No, really try to listen and take from it. How can I get in alignment with that? How can I create a win-win? So always in conflict, what I'd love to coach you guys on is how do I create a win-win? What did we cover today? There was five steps to stepping powerfully into your leadership. We covered the leadership agility mindset. We covered vision. We covered creating measurable outcomes. We covered how to execute using the agility map. So you have those six columns that you can use to then map back. And we talked about accountability, listening and checking in and overcoming conflict. Was that valuable, everybody? Yes? Okay. Now, here's the deal, you guys. If you take everything that I taught you today and apply it, do you feel like what you learned today has value? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So if you feel like what I have given you guys in this webinar today has value, I've given you everything. So I've given you so much of my knowledge. Of course, I couldn't go in depth into every single item, right? But I have absolute confidence in you. You can take what you learned here today and go out on your own and put it into action. I've given you enough to where you can do this on your own. And honestly, if that was your only option today, it'd be a worth ideal to pursue. But here's my question for you. What if there was another option, an option that allowed us to go at this together, not just in a two hour webinar, but really have me play an active role in your results? What if I took responsibility in your success? What if I had an obligation to your outcome? How would that make a difference? If you could think that I could empower you in any way, that you would like to partner with me, right? What if I could give you some shortcuts and help you get there faster, right? So you guys, whenever you hire a coach, you need to know that that's what you're doing. You're hiring someone that can help you get there much, much faster, right? Can double your speed and help you get to your results that much quicker. So go in the chat and let me know if you guys would be interested in hearing a little bit more about what I can offer you today. Yes. Okay. So let me share a little bit with you. All right. So here's a little bit about what I'd like to offer you. I'd like to offer you a much more in-depth training on this. So today there was just only so much that I could offer, right? I did my best. I actually went like an hour over time because I wanted to give you guys all the value in the world. But there is only so much I can do in limited time. So I'm inviting you today to come to my mastermind. Inside this mastermind, what you're going to get is a training by me, four hours that we're going to split into chunkable hours so that we could meet on four different days. With this training, I'm going to help you not only set up your board and figure out what your goals are, but also really make your take your vision and make it into measurable outcomes. In addition to that, I have a self-assessment for you, the one that I told you I use in partnership with Agility Health to build awareness of your leadership and you can build an actionable plan towards your vision and get feedback from others. There is nothing quite as valuable as getting feedback from others. This assessment alone, you guys, is valued at over $500. You're going to get much more in-depth knowledge and powerful knowledge of not to how to take these concepts that we talked about today and apply them in your own life. I will also add a complete set of cheat sheets on a personal and leadership agility in PDF format. So you're gonna get a complete list of all the cheat sheets. You'll get all the slides that I use, not only in this training today, but in the mastermind training as well. So you can follow along. 
Does this sound good to you guys? All right. So honestly, I am currently doing this with the Fed Reserve for $3,000 for any of my four hour workshops. What did I tell you guys earlier was my goal? To create an incredible offer for you. That is my goal today. So for a limited time only, I am offering all of this to you guys for only $197. You'll never see this offer again. So if you're interested, go to samarilada.com slash offer and sign up. When you sign up today, I'm also throwing in a few additional bonuses. Bonus number one, if you love the summit, you will get access to Women Leading Powerfully Summit recordings. So you have access to all the incredible trainings, all the incredible giveaways from all of the incredible speakers. This, by the way, includes one of just the most powerful speakers that I've ever heard talk about how to overcome imposter syndrome. After I heard Dr. AJ speak on this, I walked away saying, I can never be an imposter because there is only one version of me. It was just so powerful. And honestly, going back and hearing that, I'm telling you, it changed your life. It changed my life. So if you sign up today, within the next 24 hours, you will get this bonus. In addition to that, sorry, these bonuses are available until my birthday, because my birthday is June 5th. So I want to keep the bonuses available until my birthday. There is one extra bonus that you only get if you sign up in the next 24 hours. Another thing that you're going to get as a part of bonus number one is the powerful Theta Healing Meditation by Shereen. So if you've never done Theta Healing before, or if you may be joined, but you were, you know, switch tasking, don't switch task this time and really do it. It is one of the most powerful meditations for me. When Shereen did this meditation with me, you guys, my dad showed up in the room. My dad's passed away. So when I tell you it was powerful, it was powerful. So I really tell you to, to dig deep and go through and actually do this, right? Okay. What do you guys think so far? Worth it? All right. Let's look at number two. Weekly accountability calls for your first four weeks. So in addition to all of this, I'm also giving you over 1K value by inviting you into my accountability group. This is actually my accountability group with other leaders, and I'm inviting you guys to join that group so that you have a team that's committed to your success. We help each other when we ask that question, where do you need help? And we are really supportive of each other meeting our goals. So like I said earlier, having a community is such a powerful aspect of being able to get to where we need to get to in life. So I'm offering you this bonus as well. Bonus number three, we're not done. My incredible friend, Sarah, is actually offering you all that sign up today a sample of the acopibay.com essential oils. So when you sign up, you will get these essential oils in your home so that as you're doing the Theta Healing, you can really tap into your heart. Like I said, these smells are incredible. They are so exotic. They'll take you to locations you've never been to before. Um, one of them is called Nilen. Nilen is from River in Sudan, and it's so powerful that she really created a smell that smells like back home. So excited for you guys to try these. I promise you, you're going to love them. They're nothing like anything you smelled before. And finally, your last bonus for today, and this is only if you sign up now within 24 hours, is four one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me. So you have the individual attention of myself to truly crush your goals and an accountability partner that is committed to your success, plus a chance to be highlighted and speak at my next Power Woman Leading Powerfully Summit if you are interested in doing that. So with that, I hope that you guys will go sign up. It's only $197, and I promise you the value that you'll get will be well, well worth it. But in case you're not happy, I've got one more thing for you. I have a 30 days money back guarantee. So this is a risk-free trial. If within 30 days, you do not feel like you are on the right track to crush your goals and this investment was well worth your money, just email me at smartsmartlotta.com and I will give you a full refund. No questions asked. I really believe in what I'm offering. And so I really want you guys to come join, try this beta program. And if for any reason you feel like it's not a good fit for you, 30 days money back guarantee. 
So go to smartalada.com slash offer. I'll put it in the chat window as well. And I would love to have you all join me, guys. I would so, so love to have you join me. I'm discounting this like crazy. Literally just made an offer for this for $3,000, but I am discounting it because I really want to make this accessible to people. And so come join the program. I would love to see you guys on the other side. I have put it here. And again, within, I'll send out the replay as well. Okay. Now, can I ask you guys for a little bit of feedback? So if you remember something that I told you was that what is really incredible and what is a huge gift, always is a gift for me is your feedback. So if you don't mind, just go to slido.com again, the same link, and let me activate it first and foremost. I'd love to get your feedback. What did you get from this? What were your takeaways? What did you enjoy? What parts were you like, yo, I wish you would have just skipped that. That didn't add. I really need to know. So when I do this again, I make it even better. So please rate the value that you received during this webinar. Give me what were your key takeaways from the webinar. And also give me a little bit about what could be improved. So thank you guys so much for your time today. It meant the world to me to have you all join here live. So I'm sending you guys so much love and go sign up for the program. I promise you that you will get a ton of value. So sending you guys so much love. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining today.